one cable news network that we know President Trump watches, so maybe he's tuning in to see their chief political anchor hit the hot topics table right now. Please welcome author of the new book, Three Days in Moscow, Brett Bayer. Thank you. Thanks for having me. To see you. Good to see you. I we miss you. I loved working with you so much. Just really quick before we start, your incredible wife, Amy, is here. I am so happy to see you, too. You are my couple goals. You know my husband, Ben. <laughs> You've been married so long, and I just, I love that you have, people need to know you have a really strong woman. I definitely you. do. I'm a lucky man. I'm playing above the rim, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, is it I, just the two of you together, or do you have a third person living with you? I don't. <laughs> yeah. I did hear about that. Right? I, I'm not I, sure. I've never heard of that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yes, we don't, already. do we, babe? Okay. <laughs> no, she's not having it. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the story that we tried to break down, but I failed endlessly at earlier, that Trump disclosed that he repaid his attorney, Michael Cohen, more than $100,000 last year. So is there any version of this payment where Trump didn't do anything wrong? Listen, Rudy Giuliani came out and said this on an interview with Sean Hannity yeah. and I think that that was part of the strategy to get it out there because they knew this was going to be disclosed. Oh. I agree with you Sonny that, that there's a lot more questions about money. Yeah. Ronan Farrow has done some great reporting in New Yorker. There's two other payments that they're trying to track down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot that we don't know kind yet. Um, on the flip side there's a lot that we don't know about the start of the investigation and the IG is going to come out with a report in coming days that I think also needs to get as much time and coverage and attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So All right. <laughs> Apparently, you know, they're still hung up on uh, leaks at the White House. And uh, they haven't sort of stepped up and made an apology for this ridiculousness that's been going on. Now, about as the man, no, yeah, father. as the, as, as, the guy who's leading the country would it would you feel better if he stepped up and said listen we don't this is not what we're doing this is we don't condone this yeah well, apologize yeah i mean yeah. first of all you know we cover all aspects of washington and and as you know it's very divided in the country mm -hmm. but there is something uh about decency and i'm sorry that you and your family had to go through all that you, uh, this week because mm -hmm. you know it's there, it shouldn't have to be that way, and um, and I think it's important to you know to make that clear. Right now, how they handle it and what they do, we're going to cover all sides of it. But I, I think as a country, mm -hmm. we can be decent. Let's and um, I, it pains us that you had to go through that. So you right. you yeah. you do you think it would be a good idea? Just well, I mean, I'm not advising it. it. I'm covering it. Yeah. You know? yeah. No, no, I understand, but but. You're talking about decency, and decency is important. And we have lots of young people who watch your network, who are f taking a, a, a page out of that book. And I, d does it, as, a, as a, an American, does it bother you that we can't seem to just say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake? Yes, and I cover all of this. And yeah. if you watch my show, you know, the, some of the loudest critics of Fox don't watch my show. You know, I'm the sure. news side mm -hmm. and there's an opinion side. Right. And I say to people, just watch my show three times right. and then drop me an email or a tweet. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm telling you as a person here, do mm -hmm. I think decency should drive the day? 100%. Yeah. Right. I'm going to cover all sides. Mm -hmm you know, fairly, so people can make up their mind. I watch your show every night. You are the um, news guy. You're not an opinion guy. You're not a pundit. Um, don't you think it's a dangerous time for, for the news right now with this idea that everything is fake? Everything he says, if he doesn't like it, if it's negative, Trump says it's fake news. I think that that does you a disservice. What do you think? Yeah, and I think that, you know, any time that any reporter uh, who's trying to report things fairly gets over their skis, mm -hmm. no matter their ideological bent, uh, it hurts us overall, That's journalistically. Right. I saw Jake in this very hot seat, yes. and I thought he did a nice job. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but he said some things that I identified with, mm -hmm. and that is, you know, there are facts out there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we need to try to strive to get there. But if, if you go too far and you throw your opinions into it, either side, mm -hmm. it hurts us all journalistically. But, but if Trump keeps lying every day, he's up to nine a day, 
Nine a day. Yeah. How is anybody going to his, his base doesn't know what's the truth and what isn't the truth because they believe what he says. Yeah. From their point of view, they say that the resistance is going over the top and lying about, you know, X, Y, and Z. So you have to call facts facts. And um, and and I agree with you. you I mean, try. you gotta you try. Yeah. It's okay. like drinking from a fire hose, though. Mm -hmm. Every day, I'm, I'm one tweet away <laughs> from yeah, changing my rundown. Well, you know, yeah, so. yeah. Because it's it's so fluid and fast moving. But you know, people do see Fox News as the administration's mouthpiece. And I don't know that it helped that it's been reported that your colleague Sean Hannity talks to the president nightly before bed um, about the day's musings. Do you think that's appropriate? I understand Sean is on the opinion side of the network. Right. But as a representative of the network that Sean is, right. is that appropriate? Well, first appropriate? of all, the no network overall is not a mouthpiece. You know, there may be opinion shows that have direct relationship with the president, and uh, Sean is not calling me and giving me a download <laughs> of the call. Yeah. I was on his show the other night, and he said to me, how much problem do I cause the news, news division? Oh, mm -hmm. Scale of 1 to 10. And I said, you know, a solid 6, but um, yeah. <laughs> it depends on the day. And um, listen, we, you, we're going to cover it. Mm -hmm. There are people who have opinions and are clearly driven and have a relationship with this president, um, and they're going to do their thing. I have horse blinders on from 6 to 7 mm -hmm. uh, okay. to try to you know, do all yeah. sides fairly. Now, Brett, let's talk about your book, Three Days in Moscow. It takes us back to a historic summit President Reagan orchestrated 30 years ago, and it's coming on the heels of President Trump's own summit with North Korea, which mm -hmm. may not have could be iffy. We don't know. Um, tell us a little bit about it. So I wrote the book. Uh, it's it's the same format that I wrote this other book about Eisenhower. Three days in January, mm -hmm. and it looked at the three last days of the Eisenhower administration and kind of bounced back and showed how Eisenhower got there. Well, this is the Moscow summit, the fourth with Reagan and Gorbachev, mm. and the three days there that we uncovered all these new details and stories. And I bounced back and show how Reagan gets to that moment. Um, you know, he talked about communism falling apart all throughout his life, mm. but that relationship with Mikhail Gorbachev changed the whole dynamic. And when he speaks to Moscow State University students, uh, it's really something. If you just Google it and you watch it on YouTube, mm -hmm. no matter your ideology, left or right, it'll give you goosebumps. Well, you know, Reagan and Gorbachev had a great relationship, I remember. And Gorbachev was a good guy. I don't know about this one with Putin and Trump, though. I mean, I, I'm very suspicious of this particular relationship. Are you? And you should be. Yes. I think mm -hmm. that, you know, you, you, it's clear that Russia attacked the United States and, and in a big way. That's right. And I don't think we know fully the extent of that. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that they've been attacking the U.S. for eight decades, you know, yes. going back to when it's Reagan was the head of the Screen Actors Guild. He yeah. was fighting communism because the Soviet Union was trying to get mm -hmm. in. Um, I, I think it's it, people want the president to speak out more about Putin. The administration. Well, why doesn't he, do you think? Well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. That's right. Brett, I want to thank you so much for coming here. I, you know, I am such a fan of yours professionally and personally, and I just want to thank you for your friendship for so long, you and your wife, and this amazing new book, all of you can come, and I'm sorry, you can also catch him on the special report every night. I'm not good at reading a prompter as you are, and his new book, Three Days in Moscow, was available now. Everyone in here is getting a copy. Yeah.